Hey y'all, today we're gonna connect delta G to K. This means we're gonna connect thermochemistry and equilibrium together. And we're gonna do it both in a formulaic way, but we're also gonna do it in a conceptual way. We're gonna finish the video by looking at something else called coupled reactions, which is a really important concept as it pertains to biology. And we're gonna look at it a little bit here in chemistry as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's remember back to thermochemistry. In thermochemistry, we looked at delta G, the Gibbs free energy, as a measurement of spontaneity. If delta G was less than zero, then the reaction was thermodynamically favorable and spontaneous. And if delta G was greater than zero, then the reaction was not thermodynamically favorable and not spontaneous. We can connect this to the K value directly. Let's see how. Let's start by looking at the relationship between delta G and K. One note here is that the delta G with a degree sign specifically tells us that it is only valid at standard conditions. So this equation, delta G, is equal to negative RT natural log of K is only good at standard conditions. That's an important thing to remember. So at standard conditions, the K value if it's greater than one, leads to a negative delta G. At standard conditions, if the K value is less than one, that leads to a positive delta G. And the reason for that is because the natural log of anything greater than one is positive. The natural log of anything less than one is negative. Remember, with logs, or natural log especially in this case, the natural log of one is equal to zero. So one is equal to our tipping point. So at standard conditions, and that's a really important point here, at standard conditions, if the delta G is positive, it's because our K value is less than one. And if our delta G is negative, it's because our K value is greater than one. The other thing to note is that the bigger the K value is greater than one, the more negative the delta G value becomes. And the smaller the K value becomes, the more positive delta G value becomes. The other thing to be aware of, and this is actually an equation you won't see on the periodic table formula sheet that we give you, is that we can actually also connect delta G to Q. And the way we do this is through the utilization of some log rules. So delta G prime, all right, with a degree sign, plus RT natural log of Q is going to equal our delta G without the degree sign. This would be in real conditions, so not in standard conditions. The way we can really think about this using our log rules is by comparing Q to K. If Q is less than K, we shift our entire reaction to favor the forward direction. This makes our forward process more thermodynamically favorable. Therefore, delta G becomes more negative. If Q is greater than K, then we shift our reaction towards the reverse, which is going to, in a sense, cause the delta G to become less negative and more positive, thereby favoring the reverse direction of our reaction. Let's wrap up with something called coupled reactions. One of the most commonly known coupled reactions is actually the process of ATP to ADP. When ATP turns into ADP, a lot of biology textbooks show a little lightning bolt, all right, which would suggest that somehow breaking that bond created energy, but that's not really what happens. We know that it takes energy to break bonds. So, in no way, shape, or form does breaking the bond between the third phosphate actually create energy. It uses energy. However, the reason that the process of going from ATP to ADP is overall providing energy to other reactions is because of coupling. What happens is as a result of pairing multiple reactions together, the overall delta G value of the series of reactions that are coupled together is negative. It's kind of like Hess's law. So maybe a single step has a positive delta G, 
but in sum, all of the reactions together have a negative delta G and thus provide more energy than is used to cause that first reaction to go. So no, turning ATP into ADP does not create energy. However, when coupled with other reactions, the overall delta G is negative. All right, so that wraps up today's video. Let's do a quick recap. In summary, what you need to be able to do is take a delta G value and find a K, or take a K value and find a delta G. You need to be able to predict whether the reactants or the products will be favored using both K and delta G. You'll also need to be able to understand how Q plays a role, although you're not going to be asked this in the context of finding a number because they're not giving you that equation that I showed you. So instead, you're going to have to do it conceptually. Remember, Q versus K is a really important idea within our equilibrium unit. Finally, understanding how coupled reactions occur. Essentially, it's Hess's law in action. We need to think about delta G in the same way that we thought about delta H. If we combine a series of reactions, if the overall delta G is negative, then in the end, the overall process will in fact occur spontaneously. Today's video was written, directed, edited, and produced by Christina Eldama. Thank you all for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.